Hey guys, it's Carl. Welcome back to more Apple event coverage. We've got the brand new iPad mini in front of me, which we're about to check out. And in case you missed it, we just had the iPad OG, the first gen iPad that we just unboxed. I'll leave a vid linked up this way, but I do think the iPad mini kind of stole the show. It wasn't really expected and we got a really big design refresh and it actually becomes one of the more compelling iPads to get. And I know that we haven't seen an iPad mini refresh in the longest time, but it has a bit of a cult following. I love the small size. I love the fact that you could technically fit into a pocket if you've got one big enough. I love the fact that you can still manage to use it with one hand, unlike an OG iPad, which unfortunately I'll just grab my iPad Air here. Unless you've got Shaq style hands, I cannot fully grip that. Nope, close. With that said, let's get into the unboxing and you kind of just took a glance at what the mini kind of takes after. It is essentially a mini I iPad Air, and I think that's a really great thing because the iPad Air was my favorite iPad from last year, and it's the one that I'd recommend to most people. Top off, box-wise, it has some pretty cool box art, and I didn't realize this at launch, me just being a bit dumb. It's only when I got this in person. This actually says mini in cursive, M-I-N-I. -I. I kind of dig that, Apple. Up comes the box and we've got the iPad mini up top so you can kind of peep through the plastic. This is the new color Starlight and there's actually four different colors. You've got the traditional space gray, pink, which kind of mimics rose gold, purple, and this new Starlight. So we'll get to that in a second. The rest of the box, pretty standard Apple stuff. Designed by California in Apple. Hopefully that's not the first time you've heard that here on the channel. And inside we've got all the warranty info, user manuals, startup guides. Unfortunately, we do not get Starlight Apple stickers. You'll just get the traditional white ones. And underneath that, you do have a 20 watt charger and a USB-C cable. So that's one of the first big changes coming to the iPad mini. It now takes USB-C as opposed to the OG entry level iPad that still takes lightning. So this is the only iPad in the entire range that is still a bit dated. Always great to see Apple still including actual accessories in and not taking them out like the iPhone line. So as this boots up, we'll take a look at the color Starlight. So according to Apple, this is actually a mix between gold and silver. And in my opinion, in this lighting, it does kind of lean more towards the silver side. Maybe there's a touch of beige. Let me grab my iPad Pro, which is just in standard silver. And I don't actually have an iPad currently in gold to compare, but you can definitely see a big difference. So the silver being more true silver and the Starlight has that hint of beige. I know that it comes down to a bit more of a personal preference, but I am more of a fan of the OG silver. Maybe I'm a colder person. I don't really like gold on devices, on phones, on iPads, but uh, it isn't as deep or as warm as the true gold color. So in case you were wondering what Starlight looks like, here it is, and let me know your thoughts. And with the introduction of this new design refresh, it kind of moves away from that OG iPad look. So we have now reduced the bezel size. It's more squared at the back. I've got the LTE model here and it doesn't have that ugly black band. All of the bands are kind of integrated into the actual case back. And it overall just looks like a newer and fresher device. I know kind of which one I would pick. And like I mentioned, this is almost like a footprint or I guess a smaller footprint of the iPad Air. We've got the same bezel size, which I'm a fan of, that squarish design, USB-C at the bottom. And remember, Touch ID has been removed from the iPad mini and it's now up top where the on and off button is. And you'll actually notice the volume rocker is also on the top position, which means the sides are completely blank, but we still have speakers both on the top and the bottom of the device, which I'm a huge fan of. So pricing wise, unfortunately, because we got this huge design refresh, the price has also reflected that. So for the base model, it now starts at 64 gigs, of course, non-LTE. You're looking at 499 or 500 bucks or $650 Canadian. I know our dollar does suck. The only other storage option you sadly have is 256 gigs, which this model is. I would honestly still say you could get by with the 64 gig variant. You really need to look at what you store on your iPad. I am happy with the fact that Apple has kind of got rid of the 32 gig range. I definitely thought that was a bit too small. I think you can get by with 64. I know it's a bit on the edge, so I think you need to ask yourself what you typically store on your iPads. 
What actually makes this a bit different than the iPad Air is the chip inside, and it's actually a bit faster. It's rocking the A15 Bionic, which is actually found in the new iPhone 13 and 13 Pro. It technically isn't the fastest as we have the M1 iPad Pro, but I know that thing is pretty expensive, and I was hoping we would see the M1 in the iPhone 13 Pro but this will have the same performance as that iPhone. And I would say the M1 is a tad bit overkill for an iPad, especially with iPad OS being not so limiting, but you can't get as versatile as you'd want on say a MacBook on Mac OS. I know that that was the iPad Pro's biggest criticism. And when iPad OS was released this year, um, you know, one of the main things you could do was widgets. I think I can do more with an M1 chip than create widgets on my home screen, but uh, that's the story for another video. Because we've made the upgrade to USB-C, we're also upgrading the type of pencil that you can use. So it no longer uses the first gen. We are upgrading to the second gen Apple Pencil, which nicely snaps onto the side. And it is actually quite close to the entire size of the iPad here. And I think that's really awesome for students because I remember when I was in university, I didn't really always have a place for my laptop or my iPad to jot down notes. I took anatomy, a lot of hands-on courses. This would have been so much better going up to say the cadaver. I was kind of ingesting, digesting, investigating. What was I doing to a cadaver? Investigating? Dissecting. <laughs> Definitely not ingesting a cadaver. This would have been great just being able to hold the iPad with the one hand and being able to take notes on my iPad. The display, especially from the previous gen, has a huge upgrade, so 8.3 inches. Liquid Retina display up to 500 nits. Unfortunately, it doesn't have pro motion, so you still are stuck at 60 hertz. We've got that 12 megapixel sensor in the back, and I believe that is the same as the iPad Air as well. But I will say taking photos with the mini does look a bit more acceptable than taking photos with a large size iPad. So if you are that person, I think you can get by without getting too much flack. And with that said, I honestly think the iPad mini is my personal favorite in the entire range because of the form factor, because of that price point. I can't justify spending 2000 bucks for an iPad Pro when it still can't do anywhere near what my MacBook Pro does. Price point makes this super attractive. The fact that you can rock this with an Apple Pencil, it's got the latest chip, or I guess the same as the iPhone 13, 13 Pro, so it won't age anytime soon. And I do think it's kind of a hidden gem in the iPad line. And I will create an entire video of the OG iPad to the iPad mini, to the iPad Air, to the iPad Pro, to kind of give you my recommendation on which one to pick. But uh, I kind of think you know which one I'm leaning towards so far. Let me know who else is picking up a mini, and I will create a vid on all the new colorways. All three other models should be coming to the studio, so make sure you guys are subbed to the channel. We've also got Apple Watch Series 7, iPhone 13, 13 Pros on deck. So if that isn't any reason to sub, then I guess there is no other reason. And I just hope to catch you guys in one of those next episodes. Peace!